tell you about how we are using uh, and not abusing generative AI technologies in our lab. Uh, this was a presentation that I had for our seminar here in the Institute and I thought well maybe you would like to know it. So we are a group of a lot of students <laughs> so most of them already uh, left um, right now there are only three of them uh, with us I because I haven't had like permission to show you their faces so I have to blend them uh, but yeah so they have been a lot of students coming by and everybody has helped us a little bit in our final target and I will show you a little bit about that so you know me <laughs> and um, I have uh, different projects apart from leading the, the group um, I've been using machine learning techniques to create models for assay simulations in our lab I've been learning and trying to apply large language models in generative AI to do some pharmacovigilance scoping review, um, both in toxin for medical purposes. Um, this is a work ongoing, and I'm learning to be a better trainer. <laughs> um, I just finished my um, carpentry instructor training. What are our research purposes? So we are doing everything under open science and fair data principles and um, we think that the real target of toxins are bacterial predators and not humans and um, because bacterial predators use very similar if not identical cellular pathways to eat bacteria than the like the immune cells do the same uh, so that's why some of the tricks that work on predatory uh, or predatory protozoa um, will work on our immune cells and um, but if we know how the predators can deal with the toxins um, maybe we can uh, lend a hand to the immune cells to be able to defend against the toxins but we have to learn about them and one advantage of discovering new toxins is because they are excellent tools for cell biology and it will help us as well to do kind of like an extra safety in a safety layer extra um, when we discuss about um, therapies that are using micro microbiota or microbiomes manipulation um, so what kind of machine learning methods we are using uh, basically you have to like consider machine learning and artificial intelligence is a huge spectra of things and there are methods and techniques um, and we are usually around the area of machine learning um, uh, where we don't do anything with robotics but we do machine learning and we use things from natural language processing and deep learning to do the work that we want to do so what is really machine learning basically machine learning is just a way to discover patterns in data and um, maybe you want to look at the behavior across time and try to define something new based on those patterns that you have seen before that is what is usually called time series and then uh, if you have a uh, data with different features or characteristics then you can use those to analyze the data and maybe do some predictors or look just for patterns uh, language is one of those um, that's where the natural language processing methods are kind of like excelling uh, at the analysis and when we talk about machine learning it goes from the very simple linear models uh, to really complicated large language models and generative methods but what exactly is generative AI so there are different kind of like ways of looking at it our definition or what we try to tell people maybe we're wrong but what we're trying to do is um, 
Generative AI is just the result of a machine learning a process using natural language processing methods to create large language models that are able to interpret any query or prompt from a human and build a coherent answer for us. Yeah. Like for example, ChatGPT, you have heard probably of it, uh, Llama, Guanaco, Palm, Claw, DeepL, and uh, but generative AI is not only to answer as a writing to be back, it's just as well using prompts, um, it's able to create uh, images and that is the typical of DALI and Mid Journey and I think Gemini. Evolution of large language models has been super fast. You see that every new technique develops a new large language model. Um, right now, there is a kind of like explosion about what do you use to create generative AI? So a billion of parameters for each of the different tasks. There are some limitations and is because they hallucinate. Uh, basically, they make stuff up and uh, their answers are not always consistent. So they will change their answer depending on not even the prompt, but I don't know, they just I don't know, it just happens. If you ask something twice, it will give you a different answer sometimes, not always. Because there is, is a computer is really not thinking, uh, so you have to think for them. So that means that's where prompting, um, which is how to ask a question or how to phrase a task, is necessary and there is some prompting engineering coming out as a discipline they are really not learning on the go so they were trained and they interpret your language and they answer accordingly but they are not really learning um, they will just remember a history of discussions or inputs and then after that it's kind of like yeah dory forgetting everything and then and some of them and many of them do not have a privacy that means if you put something in the system they will keep that information in their system so those cloud based um so yeah have to be careful depending on what you want to do the advantages they are excellent summarizing documents uh what is called the stealing information they really extract the most important things the ones who have access to the internet, they have the most up-to-date information, which is good because you can retrieve information and be today kind of like actual information. Because it's a machine, there are not really expectations like when you will do with a person. So it's really nice to talk with the machine learning and ask things that you may not trust to ask somebody else because they expect you to already know certain things and what if you are learning something that you've never heard of before so that is a nice tool because some of them are highly specialized they are really good at giving us a hand at work what are we using in the lab and um, we are using for coding uh, github copilot and uh, or chat gpt4 um, for research, we have been trying Perplexity and ResearchRabbit. Uh, for learning, I'm using ChatGPT um, 3.5 and I think one of my students is using the ChatGPT 4. Uh, for extracting information, I've been using the DaVinci models from OpenAI, the cost, but the prices are going down, so I think I will give it a try with the ChatGPT 4. Um, to improve readability. So one of the things is um, many people know Grammarly and they just put the text and improve it. It's the same with uh, ChatGPT. You can give a text and then it will improve the text. Um, for translations, I do use DeepL because I have to write a lot of stuff in German and I don't feel confident enough that my translations will be fine. So like uh, free of mistakes. So I use that one. 
Um, and at the moment in our area, there is some kind of like a behavior about how to accept or not ChatGPT or any of the generative AIs. And I love this change curve because it really expresses a lot of how the people are behaving towards this new technology. And to be honest, I think um, we are coming into the exploration part. The question is, how can we keep up with the scientific integrity? When we use it, we need to declare uh, which tools we use and what for. You have to think it's a tool. Uh, so do not use them to replace your, your responsibilities or your work, yeah? Uh, they're just tools. So we, uh, I'm telling my students and I'm doing myself, I document all interactions. So for example, to make sure that people know that we created the paragraph or the text that we improved uh, using the, the uh, AI uh, or the generative AI, um, that's funny because many people who use Grammarly don't document that and they never declare it in papers and I'm sure that many people are using it because we are all non-native English speakers and we are writing in English so it is bound to happen that we have some problems with some location of adjectives or we repeat some words a lot of the time so yeah but it has to be declared the idea is keep in mind be smart but not lazy so it is to improve your work but it's not for the machine to do your work there are certain publications or like publication houses that do explain what you're allowed to do or not with uh, with generative AI and how to declare it and yeah you can go to the different websites I just took this one from Sage Publishing House you just have to declare it. That's the most obvious thing and verify that whatever you use is accurate. You need to provide a list of sources that are used by the generative AI. Does not always happen or is not possible because for example, ChatGPT at the moment, the one that I'm using, it does not give a reference, but perplexity does, even though perplexity makes up the stuff that it reads in the sources. Don't ask me why, so yeah. Be careful because um, the generative AIs can take, can extract data from something that they have seen as it's written and it can cause problems of plagiarism. As I told you, there are limitations. You have to know which ones they are and acknowledge them. For editors and reviewers, so we as yeah, principal investigators, we are asked sometimes to review or dissertations or review uh, papers. And one of the things that you have to keep in mind is that all has to keep uh, confidential. So you cannot just upload it to a generative AI and ask for a summary and like, no. If you cannot do the review yourself, then say it so and don't do it. Yeah, but don't, don't make the, don't be lazy basically. I mean, people are writing these papers and give it for peer review so that a person who is expert in the subject can give an input and make it even better if necessary or point to certain yeah, things that maybe the other person did not know. How can you expect that to be done by an AI? They are not really thinking not to do examples. Um, for example, this paper was retracted and um, it used generative AI, I think Mid Journey, uh, to create this uh, image of, yeah, so penis, rat penis for, I don't know, I don't know what was the paper about, but if you see, it's not made intelligent. I mean, come on, that they cannot even change the, the text on these things is kind of like weird. And the thing is, it shows us that the whole system failed because the authors were lazy enough not to not to change the, the text so and improve the figure where the mistakes were. Then the editor 
I don't know what he was thinking because that's the task of the editor to check it like it's something that makes sense. And then the editor has to send it to the reviewers. And the reviewers did not say anything about that either. So yeah, I don't know what happened, but that journal, I don't even know which one was it, but uh, they did everything wrong. Everything that you should not do, it was done here. And uh, yeah, so if you want more information about recommendations and guidelines at the moment, uh, there is the World Association of Medical Editors, uh, there are recommendations about chatbots, ChatGPT, and scholarly manuscripts. Um, and there is a committee on publication ethics. There is a position statement on authorship and AI tools. So basically, no AI can get uh, authorship because they cannot take responsibility for it. And uh, the work that we are doing um, is funded by the BMBF, which is the Bundesministerium für Bildung und Forschung. Um, that's the German Ministry for Education and Research, part of the European Union uh, Next Generation EU. I use a lot of different sources. There are um, Carpentry, Slack, Random Channel, Linking Discussions, Nature and Science Letters, City Editor, there are several of them. Uh, plus journals, Nature Publishing Group Author Guidelines, and the LMU Medical Faculty has explicitly made the guidelines how to use um, uh, for graduate students and the Open Science Initiative in Medicine uh, because we discuss this a lot. Um, there is a DFG which is the Deutsche Forschungsgesellschaft um, here in Germany who distributes the money for, for research and uh, the DFG has a position paper around artificial intelligence and scientific integrity if you're interested. Um, and there is the Google research blog tree, which um, I showed you before. Um, they have as well like, ideas how fast everything is migrating and I think it's even already too old for their standards. Um, if you have any questions or comments, just let me know, put it in the, in the comments below and uh, yeah, until 